This show is untested, uncensored, and un un unedited, as you can see on that particular word, and has... <laughs> Usually we'd have edited that out, but we have to keep it in. That's the beauty. It's almost like I did it on purpose, but I didn't. It's me doing stand-up about stuff I've, that's happened to me, and yeah, and then doing sketches, whatever comes out of that, either out of what, what's happened in my life or what's in the papers or whatever. I am Richard Keith Herring, and everything in this show is stuff that has occurred to me this week in one of the two senses of the word. Either it's happened to me or I've thought of it. It sort of came out of the blog, really. That I've been writing this blog for seven years, warming up. Some things that have occurred to me this week. Sunday. Watching Richard Dawkins talking about Darwin on TV, I wondered if Darwin had only come up with the theory of evolution because he really, really looks like a monkey. Uh, <laughs> check out every photo of him. Honest, great big monkey face, monkey eyes. What a convenient theory that was. <laughs> Chimpy Darwin. I've known Emma for, since I was 19 years old, so we've worked together lots and lots of times. He just phoned me a couple of months ago and just said, will you come and do something for no money? Maybe I'll buy you a dinner. If you're lucky, I'll poke you in the eye. It's David Hasselhoff singing his shit song on a crane. <laughs> you know, Osama, seeing this has made me realize just how bankrupt Western civilization is. You are totally right to want to destroy it. I really like working the work of Emma of a long time and Dan, yes, yeah, so when that was then, this is now. I saw Dan and Danny, who he works with, uh, do their Edinburgh show. First saw the script about one o'clock this afternoon, so. Uh, what was that, about six hours ago? No, no. On the contrary, the existence and success of Hasselhoff proves there can be no God. <laughs> I was wrong to do all that stuff in Allah's name. Hasselhoff has shown there is no heaven, much more effectively than John Lennon. Well, I think the freedom element uh, uh, in it having no sort of broadcasters behind it is quite exciting. I mean, at the moment, it's mainly swearing. What if I did use the whole hour of this programme just to say that one word over and again? What are you going to do? Sack me from doing a show that I put on myself that I don't get paid for? Good luck, you urethra. Yeah. You heard me. I called you a urethra. Yeah. I'm comparing you to the urinary tract. Not even the meters, which would be a little bit cool. The urethra. How do you like them potatoes? I Maybe mean, we can say whatever we like, you know. I could say cock juggling thunder cunt. No one's going to bat an eyelid. Uh, most shows edit out the mistakes and the gags that don't work and cut the show down to a tight 25 minutes. We're not going to patronise you in that way. Is patronise the right word I'm looking for there? Uh, no, respect. We're not going to respect you in that way. You're getting absolutely everything that happens on the night of the record. If someone in the audience were to shout out Willies now, there's nothing we could do to take it out. Willies! Yeah. <laughs> Loads of people do that. That was weird, wasn't it? One bloke especially loudly. <laughs> like he'd been waiting his whole life for that... <laughs> opportunity to come up. Uh, just one day I want to shout out. He's the one everyone will hear. Anyway, it's warts and all, but hopefully it won't all be warts. Or mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. This could... <laughs> Andrew Collins doing acting? I do not think so. He's been auditioning in the podcast, sort of doing impressions and things. I might give him a little shout out tonight. He's coming tonight to watch it. Are you there, Andrew? Yes. Are you having a... <laughs> So now you're in the podcast. Now, has anything interesting happened to you this week? No. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked me if I'd done anything interesting. Now, I think what he was doing there was hoping that I would supply a bit of free comedy magic, which I've been doing with him for weeks and weeks and weeks, for years, in fact, now, uh, in his attic. And I thought maybe he thought I would get him out of a hole, come up with something really sparkling. And I had thought of something really funny to say, and I, I know what that is, but you all never know what it is, because I didn't say it. I refused to say it. it was, I was mocking him, basically, from my seat with my silence. You know, I think people appreciate that I'm trying something a little bit different, a little bit revolutionary, and it's a big leap, and it's a bit of a risk, and, you know, you find that people... And I'm obviously doing it for, for the project itself rather than an <laughs> ulterior motive, and I think people respect that, you know, and, and kind of want to join in with that. I've invented a time machine, <laughs> right, but rather than choosing to use it to go back in time to kill Hitler or stop 9-11 mm. mm. or punch Jesus, Something I've, <laughs> I've decided to go back to 1974 and try and get a part in a poor quality hardcore porn flick. So. Oh, um, did you get the part? No, that's a shame of it. Mm. After all that, I couldn't maintain an erection during the audition, so... <laughs> They sent me home, so Same all problem. that inventing yeah. a time machine for nothing. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, it just works really well that it's all a little bit ramshackle. Yeah. More charming. Free playing. <laughs> it's good. Yep. Yeah. Enjoy it. Though you can get it for free, I'd still probably come again. Would you come again? Yes. Yeah. I paid for tickets. Sometimes. I'll come next week. I work just there though, so it's easy for me. You know, it's barely an effort. It's actually hard for me to go home. At least I can come here and think through my life a little bit while he's talking. It's the first time we've been to a, a live podcast and didn't realise it was going to